Sharon Ruth, and I am here to welcome you home. This is the Exposed Archive. we reveal the body-based ways to ease anxiety, heal trauma, and create an empowered connection with love and money using nervous system regulation and a healthy dose of self-compassion. Fabian, welcome. Welcome to Exposed. I am excited to chat with you today. I am super curious and I hope I can bring all my curiosity and hopefully kind of channel maybe some of the curiosity that our listeners will have to just ask you all of the questions. So you, I I find it so interesting that it it feels like you have such a a big, wide, smaller spot of experience like you started as a biochemist and then like you're there's a sculpture and then there's hypnosis and coaching and and healing and spirituality and like really 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 cool um keeping all of that in mind and I'm sure you'll weave it in today we're going to focus on intergenerational healing I want to focus on this because I've actually been focusing on it a lot with my clients interestingly enough and it's not something that usually my clients will come to me and be like oh I have intergenerational healing to do but I've noticed that we'll kind of work together for a little while and then it will kind of pop up and it will be something that needs a little bit of attention so my first curiosity is hi how did you get to be somebody who knows about intergenerational healing and can guide other people through it. Okay. First of all, thank you for having me here, Sheridan. It's exciting to be here. It's exciting to connect with you and to your listener. Uh, So happy. So intergenerational healing, for those who don't know what it is, it's healing by addressing the trauma that comes from your life, but also from your parents' life, from your grandparents' life, great-grandparents. And sometimes it can affect cousin, uncle, everything that go in this tree that we call family. Mm -hmm. It can also go through, it's the obvious one is family. It can also branch out to a person who was taking care of you and their own ancestry. So all this tree that's go in the past generation after the generation, uh, it's nothing very, it can sound hoo-hoo, it's not that hoo-hoo. Uh, you mentioned that time a biochemist something that has been proven more and more in the past few years is that phobias create modification in our DNA. Different type of uh, hydrogen molecule are are positioned in DNA and uh, create allow the DNA to fold in a certain way and to be read in a certain way. And basically, depending on what you're going on, uh, what is going on through your life, the DNA falls differently. And if there's a big traumatic event, or as I mentioned earlier, a phobia, like being attacked by an animal or something like that, it will create a different fold. And this fold is it's transmitted now by, from generation to generation. And we can see uh that's actually emotion can be transmitted from generation to generation uh your question was how did i get uh, interested in that honestly uh because of my love of genetics because i wanted to 
address the fact that we are yes here in the present but also that what is going on in our life is part of our dna it's part of our genetic it's part of the baggage we come with in this world that's one and also because of my own life and my own intergenerational trauma very quickly uh, all the women in my life have been until my mom have been abused, abandoned, and even my mom has been given away because she was a girl. So a lot of belief of girl are not enough or girl are not worthy. I was really deciding to stop with this trauma and uh, start working on that. And it was also putting together my love for science and for spirituality and healing. So. Oh, interesting. How curious. Um, I, what you're talking about is essentially like epigenetics. It is. Yeah. It is. Thank you for translating it in a few words <laughs> and make it easy. Yes, epigenetics. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and it's so much a topic of the, the day. And people feel like something that I want to address right away. We receive from our parents, from our ancestors, trauma but we also receive gifts and so wisdom don't, and knowledge don't see the, the oh my gosh i receive all the poo poo from old generation yes you receive that but you receive so much wisdom and so many gifts as well and celebrate that totally and so i think that there is probably a lot. everyone who's like googling epigenetics right now or is or is going back in their file cabinet to like figure out what they you know they know about epigenetics already that's really important and as we listen through this podcast let's take a moment to just get really curious and like maybe even take your hand to your heart and just like take a moment pause We're going to listen to Fab through that space of humility and the not knowing. And that while, yes, there's all of this amazing science and there will be a time and a place to understand the nitty gritty of that. Just for now, just for today, can we open up to listening from a place of, hmm, well, Let's just see, let's just see, because maybe, maybe, maybe there's something else here. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. that, Jordan. It's lovely. Be at the end of it, the how it works, the science of it doesn't matter so much as how can I heal how can i feel happier and better in my life in a day-to-day -day basis yeah and how can i find joy in every moment yeah so what type of people or how do you know if you could benefit from this modality or this approach Usually it comes very simply in a conversation with one of my clients who is talking to me about a difficulty in the relationship that they have either with a partner or uh, even in their life as entrepreneur of, I don't think I'm good enough, I don't think I'm capable, I don't think I'm worthy. And I'm like, who told you that for the, f where did you hear that? And mm -hmm. it's, oh, my dad used to tell that my, to me all the time. Mm -hmm. Or mom used to tell, to criticize me all the time and she was not available. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no, okay. If you were to talk to mom or to dad and discuss that, what would be the message? Um, let's say dad, dad would say, is that the way it is? You know, you have to 
prove to you, prove yourself over and over again, you never will be good enough. My dad told me the same thing. And suddenly you're like, oh, dad told me that I will never be good enough. And he heard that from his own dad. Oh, that's look like a trauma that was transmitted wow. or a message that passed from generation to generation. Yeah. So the obvious going to be to address the, the problem with client with that, but sometimes it's not where it was created. It was created at grandfather and grandfather probably heard it from his own father or his own mother. So the tool, the, the, the goal is to go to the very first time it was created. It can be one generation ago. It can be two generations ago. It can be 10 generations ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think that what you're saying links as well into like inner child healing. It goes a little bit further. And I agree. And something that I have found helpful to add is that sometimes we can do inner child healing or I do a lot of like nervous system body based stuff and I've noticed that I'll know when it's time to look at something that's ancestry related mm -hmm. or generations beyond related when one of two things happen one we do the inner child healing but the pattern is still there so it's like okay Absolutely. that was just one instance of it and it's like consistently still there or two, like we can literally, you can literally ask if you get really curious um, with the sensations in your body. And one of the things that I do is like somatics part works and somatic inquiry. You can, you can just ask, is this a pattern that I'm holding that was created in me? Or is this a pattern from my ancestors? And something that I found super interesting is that I've also, I've always had a lot of like scarcity stuff, like nervous system scarcity stuff. And I was always so confused. I was like, but I have money. <laughs> What's going on? And then I had this like inkling and I, I realized, you know, many, many generations back when my family were immigrants hundreds of years ago, oh, yes. they were in extreme poverty and my nervous system is still holding that. And when I started doing just a few sessions around that, like that, that anxiety insight gone. Like I'm like, and I've it's, been working on this stuff for years and like, now it's like gone. And so it's, it's really, really, really powerful. Yes. Yeah. It's super powerful. And it's actually not so much more complicated than work in the present. Because no, it's very much the it's, same. It's exactly the same. Whether you work in the present moment or if you work 10 generations ago, it's exactly the same thing. You just transport yourself to 10 generations ago. You do the healing at the time and at that time. And, and it energetically travels back to you yeah. today and really yeah. rewire your DNA. Yeah, uh, because you're holding it in your nervous system, you're holding it in your DNA, you're holding it in the cells that your genes are creating consistently inside of your body. So when we change what's happening at the call, it has to change your experience of today. And it changes your descendant because the work you do today will affect hopefully in a positive way, if you do positive work, it will affect your kids and it will affect your parents. Once I did healing, yeah. I had a call from my mom telling me I love you. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, where does it come from? I just do the session on that. Perfect. And yeah. They feel it. Yeah. I think it's a good thing to do if you're struggling with your relationship with your parents, you know, we probably Absolutely. all do at some point and family members can be annoying and, oh, we can get so frustrated. <laughs> but it doesn't days. mean, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean that they're like going to stop being who they are and they're going to stop being annoying. But a lot of the activation that we receive around it can be minimized 
when we do this type of work because we act it's so much easier to access that place of like oh mom <laughs> i love you but you're so silly <laughs> Yes, absolutely. If you are actually have done the work and you feel neutral about it and you feel you have done your own healing, the, the trigger of mom will not affect you. This not in the same way for sure. Yeah. And yeah. your mom and your really, I mean it, your parent might feel it differently. Uh so I I know you told me to be practical and really, really give a lot of tool uh, to your listener. So what would be helpful? Do you want me to tell them how they can actually try to do the work on their own or something like that? Yeah, that's a good question. Let me think. Let me just I think. Know because we want to drop away from this logical mind, right? And as I was hearing you speak, I was like, even my logical mind, I, I've experienced this. I do this, I teach this, this is oh, my yes. job. And even the, I have a skeptical part of me that's like, but can mom really, can grandma really feel it? <laughs> right. But um, I think that I would love to hear your perspective as on looking at what's happening as a messenger you kind of spoke to that so like and i might edit this part out please in fact i will i'll make it no, yeah okay coming back if we have all this information we need to start knowing how to apply it so if i have anxieties or or that nervous system activation or like I'm fighting with my dad or, or my sister or my brother, whatever it is, what's the one thing that I need to change to be able to access this path that you're describing? We always start by stopping. It's funny because you asked this question and the first thing was like, pure silence and the number one thing you need to do at any moment when you want to access this path is stopping to be in the rush and in the story and what is going on and i have been arguing with mom with that there's too much noise and it's totally getting to your head it's like stopping taking a breath listening listening to your body as you say earlier the somatic experience what am i experiencing yeah. i'm experiencing judgment i'm experiencing tension i'm experiencing whatever you are experiencing in the moment and if it's helpful just and you probably work exactly that way with your client as way uh, as well is how do you experience this energy? Visualize it as a shape, as a color, as whatever way you want to see it represented so you really become aware of it as an energy and not as the message of the energy because the message is all the story and all those things that are in your head. And once you find this energy, really trace it back to what it tries to tell you. Oh, I feel anxious. I feel anxious and I feel it as a tension in my chest. Okay. What is this tension in your chest, this red ball that is pressuring in your chest, whatever way you feel it, what is it trying to tell you? Oh, it's trying to tell me I'm anxious. Okay, I go. I get it. I get it. When was it placed it for the first time? Oh, it was placed for the first time. Or oh, I felt it the first time uh, when I was two-year-old and mom was criticizing me. 
Okay, good. Okay, we're going somewhere. It tells us the origin of it. It tells us the creation of it. And it's not, the anxiety is not an enemy. The anxiety is a messenger that your body, the message your body sends to you to say, hey, pay attention, I'm hurting. And that's all it is. And I know anxiety doesn't feel pleasant. <laughs> it's awful, actually. But when you stop judging it as unpleasant and awful and all of that and the story going behind it, and you're like, become curious. I heard you pronounce this word of curious over and over, and that's one of my favorite words. When you can be curious about your own sensation and see what is it trying to tell me? What is it trying to teach me? Know you're golden. Okay. Yeah. It, it came from this argument with mom. Why was mom so angry at this moment? Oh, because she had her own fear and I could, you can actually, something that your client can do very, very easily with a little bit of practice, but it's not that complicated, is it transport your energy, feel yourself in the body of mom. What does mom, as a when your two-year-old was experiencing that pushed her to scream at you? Oh, yeah. she was feeling actually exactly the same anxiety. What you touch on there is so important because I noticed that sometimes I, I facilitate these conversations between mm -hmm. like you and mom and you kind of step in between and we kind of role play in a sense. Yeah. And usually what happens is we begin to realize that in every conflict, both people are feeling the exact same way. Oh, yes. Yes. And especially in conflicts where there's like no resolution. So it's like the one person wants one thing and they can't have that I, I, without the other one. So what do you feel? Scared, lonely, mm -hmm. sad, alone, like, and both people end up feeling the same thing. So what do we do? We learn to be with that experience. Mm -hmm. Can we say yeah. we're the same? We're yes. in two different things, but we're the same. Yes. And so to go, to put it back on the generational trauma or the generational belief, that same reaction that mom might have, she has it because it was placed in her, in her own childhood when she was arguing with her own mom. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that's ahead. why it gets tricky to change, right? Because we're not changing just something that you started last Wednesday. We're changing patterns that your, your body has had for decades, if not like thousands, maybe not, I don't know, thousands, but like hundreds of years for some people. And sometimes something that you're not even aware of. Uh, can I give you an, a little bit of... Uh, I, uh, yeah, give us an example. Story. Yeah, uh, I work with a, a client once at the beginning of COVID. She had this beautiful house, a lot of garden, a lot of space. She has money. She had everything to face COVID in a really peaceful way. But she was really triggered by it. And she was like, I don't understand. It doesn't feel proportionate to what I'm experiencing. I should not feel that scared. Mm -hmm. So we went, we follow that fear from a body. And so if it was hers and it was not, as you mentioned sometime, that the case, it was not hers. And we went to when this fear appear in our awareness somewhere. And she saw very clearly the, the image of a grand, grandmother, great grandmother in that case, who was, who escaped Europe at the beginning of the century during the Spanish influenza, except, except that grandma had lost her husband. She had 11 kids and was extremely poor and was in a situation where it was extremely frightening. Oh. So, 
so just seeing that it was like, I'm not my great grandmother, I'm not in the same situation, acknowledging the difference, just that in itself, a yeah. lower to relax a, a fear to, yeah. in two minutes. Yeah. And what you're talking about, that understanding of that's theirs and not mine is so important to be able mm. to say, yeah, that makes sense. That you felt that way then makes so much sense. And this fear is not mine. Yes, my body mm. can move it. Yes, I can hold it. Yes, I can like process and move the energy out. But, mm. but it's not mine. And I noticed this is happening a lot. Like COVID, I think was a wonderful example. Yes. What you mentioned before, like around abusive relationships now that thankfully women are coming to a place of more empowerment. Mm -hmm. We're still holding the abuses that we have experienced of all of the generations prior to us. Yes. And we need to move them out. We need to say that was then, this is and now. This is now so that we can see the reality and receive men and women in an empowering way. Yes, because women, my great grandmother was married at the age of 14 against her will to a 60 year old man. Yeah. That will never happen. Happen again. Today, that happened in some society, even in the United States, unfortunately it is today, but, Let's say I would not have this experience and yeah. I'm the different woman that my great grandmother was. So yeah. it's possible. It's so, just a realization of the difference and the gift. And maybe I'm not that same person. Let's go back to the gift because she had done some level of healing and her kids have learned something and the following generation has learned something and I get also the gift. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what a gift as well to be able to give to our ancestors. I, I think about this and, you know, if you guys yeah. are like Sharon and this is too spiritual now, whatever, here it's my podcast. So too bad. <laughs> um, what a beautiful gift to be able to connect with your ancestor and say, Hey, we're okay. now." Yes. And yes, it's spiritual, but at, at the same time, it's, it's very practical. What did mm. you learn? What, did you, what was the message? Uh, it doesn't... So, so go ahead. Can you give like an example? Like, because we've spoken a little bit about the wisdom, but I'm really curious. What is wisdom that you have, like... What is wisdom that you have seen other people receive or you've received through these experiences that is almost like, like I want you to give me like a one-liner like of grandma's wisdom. Do you know what I mean? Oh my <laughs> goodness. A one-liner of you. Okay. The, the message that when we do inter intergenerational healing, uh, the number one wisdom that yeah. clients receive is you are loved. Mm, you yeah. are loved. Love is there around you. Even though I was not able to express it, you are loved. That's the number yeah. one message that comes back yeah. over and over and over again. Well, that's enough. We don't need it. That's else. enough. <laughs> you can add, I'm proud of you. You can add whatever it is. It's love is always there. Love, love is energy. And it's, it is transmitted very easily from generation to generation. We, in the physical world, our ancestors were not taught how to express love. You know, I, a lot of uh, ancestors is like, I love you, but I don't need to tell you. And it, but the, en you, the energy of it is there. Yeah. And sometimes it, it, can, it, it can skip a generation, by the way. 
But yeah, and sometimes we are, we are, you know, when your mom tries to like feed you a lot of food, I think that's her being like, I love you. <laughs> or there was a meme my partner sent me and it's like, and a Colombian dad, my partner is Colombian, and it was like when a Colombian dad is trying to tell you I love you, and it's like I leje cafe, it's like I I left you coffee, like that's <laughs> I love you, right? Because it can be really vulnerable and really difficult, and only now we're getting used to like saying these things to people, and even then we're not that good at it. <laughs> but it saying I love you is checking like did you check your car oil? Did you eat lunch? Um, I got you like, that's, that's the way that people express love. And sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but yeah, for most people, it really is truly there. Yeah. It is. You guys are and loved. You are loved. And how to say that. Dear listener, before we wrap the end of this episode up, I want you to know that I see you. I know that you're ready to bounce back from difficulties in your life quickly and with more ease by having the tools to regulate your nervous system and find inner peace instead of inner conflict. I know you're ready to embrace life's challenges and stresses and feel confident to take on whatever comes your way, including anxiety or anger, to move through them without manipulating them, without having to spend eternity in uncertainty, sticky emotions and physical discomfort. You are ready to celebrate the growth of yourself, your relationship, your finances without experiencing shame or guilt when you're doing it quicker than those around you, which is why I'm extending an invitation to you to book a expansion call where we will dive even deeper on exactly what you need in your personal situation to make this a reality, to go from overwhelmed managing big emotions and perhaps going into anxiety or depression to overflowing abundance, ease and certainty. You'll get free support around your unique situation and we will also discuss whether or not working through my ease framework in a one-on-one capacity is the best fit for you right now on your journey of becoming more resilient and regulated. Use the link in the show notes to lock in your call ASAP. The love is so easy to express in energy. And sometimes your parents will not be able to tell you, I love you. They will not say it in the physical because of the fear because of the judgment the it's not used to it a lot i I, it's terrible i tell a lot of my client it's easier to work with somebody who is already passed on because at that point there's not this ego this message oh i should not say that that so sometimes it's okay you work just energetically you feel the love and you don't need to hear the words yeah, because it has to pass through such a filter and so many layers of yourself, which has its own stuff, because everyone's got stuff to get to the words. So, yeah. yeah, and I think probably that's like the most important thing I think people need to take from this is that even through all of the stuff and all of the pain and the confusion, you're loved. You are loved. So would it be okay to send them love, unconditional love? You are yeah. loved. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Just take the time to feel this love in every single cell of your body. It's there. Just say yes. And allow it to come in. Thank you for this beautiful moment. Thank you. Thank you. I know that you have given, have done such a good job. The listeners can go back and listen to your specific steps for moving through the the things, (laughs) the thoughts, the stop and the slow and then decipher. And I know that you also have a gift to send them. 
and yes. I'll post information below. Yeah, do you want to tell us about it? Oh, it's very easy. I would be happy to talk to anybody, any of your listener who feel like, oh, there's this thing that I need to heal in my trauma, in my family, ancestry, trauma, lineage, whatever it is. And it's time for me to look at it. Can I talk to you about it? I would be happy to talk with them on Zoom, wherever they are in the world, and uh, for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And uh, I will just, you will put the link I know for it, my website slash gift, very simple. And I look forward to talking with every single one of you. Yeah, you guys are lucky. You guys are lucky. It's invaluable to have somebody's undivided attention on you and your needs. So I'm going to leave that down below for you. Sending you all so much love from our hearts to your ears. And thank you, Fab, for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. A big and special thanks to Upturned for composing this magical piece of music and to GS Studios for mixing it. To find Upturn's other tracks or ask for your own special custom piece of music, go say hello using their contact details in the show notes.